Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. Welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're going to be talking about Power BI as it relates to data flows. Now a data flow is essentially the Power Query Editor online. It allows the transformation of your data to be shared out across your business unit, also known as the ETL or Extract, Transform, and Load process. And so with data flows, it allows one person to make all the transformations needed for your company, and then everybody can connect into the data flow using Power BI to essentially minimize the need for everyone to make the same transformations. Now, if you have a A3 premium capacity or higher, you're gonna get the availability to use what's known as the Enhanced Compute Engine. So what this does is it drastically reduces the refresh time for very long ETL processes, uh, things such as joins and merge and combining of data, group by, distinct. And so when you have an extremely large process, that takes a long time, the Enhanced Compute Engine can allow you to reduce that time. It also allows you to connect using direct query to your entities or your tables. And so with this premium capacity feature, once again, it has to be at least A3 or higher, you're going to have this ability to turn on the Enhanced Compute Engine. Now, if you turn it off, you're not gonna be able to use the direct query connection mode inside of Power BI. So as you connect to the data flow, you're gonna have the choice between import, and if you have the Enhanced Compute Engine turned on, you can also select direct query as well. Once again, the data flow is essentially the Power Query Editor, but it's online. So it's gonna take some online processing in order to make sure those transformations are done correctly and efficiently. So today we're gonna to be looking at a question relating to that. Let's go ahead and get started. A business intelligent or BI developer creates a data flow in Power BI that uses direct query to access tables from an on-premises Microsoft SQL server. The enhanced data flows compute engine is turned on for the data flow. You need to use the data flow in a report. The solution must meet the following requirements. Minimize online processing operation, minimize calculation times and render times for visuals, include data from the current year and up to and including the previous day, what should you do? So as always, let's take a look at some of the important pieces of information here. The first one being that this is connecting to an on-premise Microsoft SQL Server. So what that tells us is that this is going to require a data gateway. So as the BI developer creates the data flow in order to take data that is on premises and move it to the cloud, we're gonna need that data gateway which essentially acts as a bridge to transfer our data. The other important piece of information here is that the compute engine, which is a premium feature, is turned on for the data flow. So what that tells us is that this is going to have the ability to connect into the data flow using direct query. So when the compute engine is turned on, we can connect to the data flow using the direct query connection method inside of Power BI. So it also says that we must minimize online processing operations. That's the first requirement. Minimize calculation times and render times and include data from the current year up to including the previous day. So those are the three requirements that we have. So let's look at option A. It says create a data flow connection that has direct query mode selected. Now remember direct query is going to connect into the data flow directly. It's a live connection. And so this is going to use online processing. So as we look at this requirement here, it's not the best choice because it requires that online processing, which goes against that first requirement to minimize online processing operations. And so we're going to eliminate option A. Option B says create a data flow connection that has direct query mode selected and, and configure a gateway connection for the data set. So it's not necessary because the SQL Server is on premises and not in a cloud environment. The gateway connection 
for the data set has already been established in the original data flow in order to connect to that on-premise data. And once again, that direct query mode is going to use online processing. And so we want to minimize the online processing operations as part of the requirements. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate option B as well. Option C says create a data flows connection that has import mode selected and schedule a daily refresh. Now that's definitely a potential option, but let's look at option D. Create a data flows connection that has import mode selected, similar to C, and create a Microsoft Power Automate solution to refresh the data hourly. So this is the key difference here in option D is that we're gonna create this Power Automate solution to refresh the data hourly. So if the data refreshes too frequently, this might lead to unnecessary processing operations which once again goes against what our goal is. We wanna minimize the online processing operations and not only that, but it's refreshing hourly. So as we look at this third requirement here, include data from the current year up into including the previous day. This is telling us that this is going to be a daily refresh. And so because of that, Option C is the correct answer. Create a data flows connection that has import mode selected. So we're importing it into Power BI using the data flows connector. And we're gonna schedule a daily refresh inside of the Power BI service. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.